All right, video two. So you'd already started taking some notes on this. <clears throat> Let me finish it up here. Uh, one of the powers of Congress is they are the impeachment, uh, involved in the impeachment process. Um, what it says here with impeachment is impeachment, the whole process is removing a government official for breaking the law. The actual term impeachment just means that you've been charged with a crime. So we've had two presidents impeached. One of them is Bill Clinton. One of them is Andrew Johnson. Those are our two presidents that have been impeached. We had talked in class uh, some days about why Richard Nixon was not impeached and that he had quit before he was ever uh, impeached for his crimes. Um, with Bill Clinton and Andrew Johnson, we don't have much time, so I'll explain what they were impeached for uh, when I get back tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, it's good stories. So uh, with the impeachment process, the way it works is the House of Reps acts as the police, if you want to think of it that way. They're going to be the ones that charge you with the crime. If you're a government official and you've done something wrong, they're going to say, here's what we think you've done. You're being charged with the crime. You would need a majority of the House of Representatives to vote in favor of charging you with this crime. If you get a majority vote of the 435 House members, you would officially be impeached. Then you go to the Senate for your trial. In the trial, it works just like a trial in a courtroom. The senators would be able to ask questions. They would, uh, they would uh, be asking you what was going on. You'd have a lawyer there representing you. Uh, and then when all of the testimony was brought out, all of the evidence, the Senate would vote. The 100 members of the, senator would, of the Senate would vote. And if two-thirds of them, 67 of the 100 senators, find you guilty, you will be removed from office. The vice president of the United States, as the, as the president of the Senate, we said he's usually not there except to break a tie. One of the reasons the vice president would show up was would to be, be the judge in an impeachment trial, but only if it was an impeachment trial for someone other than the president. If the president is uh, being impeached, the trial would be run by the chief justice of the Supreme Court. The reason we don't want the vice president to be in charge of the president's impeachment trial is because he would be biased, either trying to help the president out because they're friends and the president helped him get his job, or he may be biased to get rid of the president because he would become the next president if that president were gone. Uh, so either way, we don't want the vice president in charge of a presidential impeachment trial. So the chief justice of the Supreme Court takes over. If the president or a judge or whoever is being impeached is removed from office, they can never hold another job in government again. They lose their uh, uh, ability to be a member of our government. Uh, they can still vote. They can do all the other things citizens can do, but they just can never run for office again. So that's essential question 17. We're looking at the powers and limits of Congress. We would went through the delegated powers that we've talked about before, the implied powers and how the elastic clause lets Congress stretch its powers to add in more, the prohibited powers that say Congress is not allowed to do certain things. Then we looked at some specific special uh, powers of the Senate and then at the impeachment process, which is another check of the Senate on the judicial and executive branches. What we're going to look at here now next is essential question 18, which is over the major power of, of Congress, which is how does a bill become a law? All right, here's essential question number 18. And it doesn't say it on here as the essential question, but our essential question number 18 is simply how does a bill become a law? It's the major power of the legislative branch, and it's something that we need to know. What this chart shows you, just basically from far away, is that because we have a bicameral legislature, okay, our House of Representatives and our Senate are both going to need to pass a bill to get it to turn into a law. And they're going to have to pass it in pretty much the same way. So we're going to follow one of these paths around so that you learn the path. Realize that the other house is doing the same exact path. A bill has to pass both houses in the same form before it goes to the president to be signed. So the first thing to know is these bills are going to uh, have to be passed in both houses. So zooming in here, we're going to look here at the House of Representatives side and just say that the bill is starting that direction. What happens with a bill is anybody in the United States can have an idea for a bill, any citizen. Uh, you or I could have an idea for a bill. Uh, the president could have an idea for a bill. A representative or a senator could have an idea for a bill. A Supreme Court judge could have an idea for a bill. 
Anybody can have an idea for a bill, a way to make our country better, but they have to call their representative or their senator to give them this idea. As a constituent, we are not allowed to go into Congress and write the bill ourselves and present it to Congress ourselves. We're in a republic. And in a republic, we said we give our government all of the power to do our jobs for us. So if we have an idea for a bill, we are going to call our Congress member and say, here's our idea. And what they're going to do is write the bill out, and then they are going to introduce it into their house. Here we're looking at the House of Representatives. So this would be like Blaine Lukemeyer. We give him an idea, and he's going to introduce it to the House of Representatives. <laughs> Once it's introduced, it immediately goes to a committee. Now it says there that it's referred to a House committee or a subcommittee. What a committee is, is out of the 435 reps, each of them is going to have their own specific things that they know a lot about. So they're going to end up on committees that are specific to their knowledge. So you might, you're going to have a committee on education, a committee on energy, which would deal with oil and gas and, and solar power and nuclear energy. You're going to end up with a committee on transportation, lots and lots of different committees. And in these committees, then it would be broken down even further into subcommittees. Transportation committee might have railroads, boating, uh, highways, uh, air, say, you know, it's going to have every way you could travel, and they're going to have committees that deal with just laws dealing with that specific area. So a bill is going to go, once it's introduced to the entire House, it's going to go to the committee, and this is where most of the work is done in Congress. Most work is done in committee. This is where most of our representatives and senators spend their day. They meet in a small group looking at all the bills that deal with their area of expertise. And in these committees, what they're going to do is the committee is going to hear testimony on these uh, bills. They're going to look at uh, facts and figures. They're going to bring in experts to talk about it. Citizens can come in and talk about it. People are going to have a say in what this bill should be. They're going to make changes to the bill, add things in, take things out, and then the committee is going to decide on the bill. Should we send it to the entire house or should we throw it in the trash? There are lots and lots of places when a bill is going through this process where the bill can simply be thrown in the trash. Now this diagram doesn't show that, and that's one of the things I don't like about it so much, but at all of these steps, the bill can simply be thrown in the trash, voted down. There are lots of chances for us to get rid of the bill. And the reason for that is we only want good bills to become laws. So here where the committee marks up the bill, it may have never even got there. It could have been when the bill first came to the committee, they immediately said, we've seen this kind of bill before, it won't pass, and gotten rid of it. But if they, if they start to work with it and they make changes, it will eventually be voted on by the full committee. If the committee votes yes on it, it's going to then go to the entire House. The committee will be put on the House calendar, and now the Speaker of the House will bring this bill up to the entire House of Representatives to be debated on and voted on. If the committee votes no on this bill, if it gets less than a majority vote in the committee, bill is thrown out, never to be heard from again. But let's say it got the committee's approval, it goes to the whole entire House, now the House is going to read this bill to all 435 members. They would be able to debate it, speak on it, look into it. They could add more amendments to it if they decided to make more changes. And eventually it would go to a full House vote. The entire House of Representatives, all 435 members, would vote on this bill. If it gets a majority vote, and it doesn't say it here on this diagram, which is one of the things I don't really like, if it doesn't get a majority vote, the bill is dead. It's thrown in the trash. It's done for. But if it gets that majority vote, which is 50% of the House plus one person, 218 members vote yes, that bill has now passed the House of Representatives. Now, I won't go through all these steps over here with the Senate, but once that bill passes in the House, it will be sent to the Senate, and then it would go through all the same exact steps over on the Senate side. Now, what they do a lot of times to save the trouble is when the bill is introduced to the House, a very similar bill is introduced in the Senate. So these bills are going around on each side at the same time. When both bills get to this point, if one House passes the bill and the other one does not, the bill is dead. It's throwing the trash. It has to pass both houses of our Congress. Having a bicameral legislature is a great example of checks and balances. If it doesn't pass in one house, it must not have been a good bill. 
if it does pass in both houses of Congress, and we can see here, if it does pass in both the houses with the majority vote, you might have a Senate bill and a House bill that started out similar, but because they've added these amendments, they are now different. You can't send two bills to the president that are similar and not the same. You're going to have to combine these bills. So what we have right here is the two bills come together and we end up with a joint committee. We had this on our worksheet and I said we were going to talk about it today. A joint committee, just think of like uh, you're joining two sides together. And so what it is is you have members of the House of Representatives and members of the Senate who are experts on this bill, probably people that come from the committees, they, uh, the, the subcommittees, they're going to come together and they are going to take their two bills and work together to create one bill that is the same. That bill then is sent back to the full houses for another vote. And if that bill now gets a majority vote, vote in both houses, it is now approved by our Congress. From there, it goes to the White House. And on its way to the White House, the president can do two things. Sorry for all the flipping there. Uh, the president can do two things. He can either veto that bill, and if he vetoes that bill for one reason or another, you can see with these red arrows, it's sent back to each house, and it can now be voted on again, and this is their chance to override the president's veto. However, if the president likes the bill and he signs it, the bill now has become law. And this is now a new law that our government will uh, give to the people to be followed. These are the steps of how a bill becomes a law very simply. It's essential question 18. Tomorrow I'll have a handout for you that shows you all of these steps in case you didn't get them all down in your notes and you'll be able to see the steps on a handout that I have. What I'm going to show you real quick here now is a couple different videos. One is the famous Schoolhouse Rock, I'm Just a Bill. What I want you to look for is how good of a job they did in explaining how a bill becomes a law. They really only leave out a few steps that deal with committees. Other than that, every step is in there. It's a very good video. And then I'm going to have a video that I made. Uh, I took the song, I'm Sexy and I Know It, by uh, uh, LMFAO, and I turned it into a song called uh, We're Making Laws and I Know It. I made this video a couple years ago. It has all the steps in it. Hopefully, you'll be able to understand it. Um, my kids are in it with me. Uh, my one son is supposed to be, uh, there's a bill that's going to deal with midget rappers, and there's a bill that's going to deal with uh, hobo rappers, homeless rappers. And um, that's the, the, the two different bills that are being combined into one. That's supposed to be like the amendments to the bill. And what they end up coming up with is a midget hobo rapper bill. So he kind of has like a beard, like a guy on a train and he's got his wrap glasses and so if you can't tell what that is that's usually the only confusing part. Um, other than that just uh, enjoy those videos and uh, that's it.